Hello! So, today we are taking a look at the North American AV-10 Bronco in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This has just been released by Azure Poly, and I am massively impressed with it. So, uh, all I've done so far is go through the procedures and have a look around it, but look at the quality of the modelling. It's, it is something else, it really is. So we'll go around the aeroplane and then we'll go and have a look in detail at some of the bits and pieces. So it's just very, very good. So the quality of the modelling, if we just go up close to some of these details on the wings, it's just next level. It really is. So we're at China Lake, by the way, and Eastern California. Um, we've got the one of the USAF liveries here. You get several liveries with the AV-10 Bronco. So let's have a look around. Let's go and scoot up underneath the wheels, because people always seem to be interested in this kind of thing. Okay, so you can see the aircraft does have pylons ready for weapons to go on but it's from the marketplace, so you wouldn't expect it to have weapons. I think Azure Poly have played a bit of a blinder here. So although you buy it from the marketplace, there is then a free download from their website that extends the aircraft and gives it its weapons back. So they can legally sell it from the marketplace in Flight Simulator, but then with the add-on module for it, for the PC, you can add the, we the weapons back onto it. So if we go up and have a look inside, you can see the cockpit is modelled wonderfully. And it's got a rear cockpit as well. So if we come around here and have a look through the glass, you can see the, um, the co-pilot is really a, a communications officer. I'm guessing they would be a navigator as well under the correct circumstances. So anyway, we've had a little look around the aeroplane. Let's go and take it for a flight, shall we? So I'll put the drone camera controller to one side. I'm going to work through the instructions that came with the aircraft. I've written them up in the style that I normally write these things up. So hopefully we should be able to find our way around the aircraft quite easily. So before we do that, let's just have a little look around at the quality of the cockpit. You can see it just looks photographic. It's very, very impressive. Yeah. Okay, so before we go much further, let's go and put some weapons on it. So if you've got the add-on for the weapons, when you click on the, the bomb icon, on the tablet in the aircraft, you can add lots of things to it. So let's go and fill it up and we'll go back outside. You can see it's sagging as the weight increases outside. There we go. So let's go back to the drone camera and we can see now we have a whole different ball game outside. So we, we should have some sidewinders. So let's go and have a close look at them. See how well modeled they are. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? It's pretty good. And we've got some rocket packs underneath. Very cool. And machine guns in the... the pods on either side of the aircraft. Well, probably cannons more than machine guns, but I'd have to go and read up on that to find out and tell you one way or the other. So yeah, it's very cool, isn't it? So now we have weapons. But anyway, obviously, we can, well, I'm not sure if we can fire them or not. I've not read that in the instructions yet. So I'm not going to say anything one way or the other. Let's go back inside the airplane. So for testing it out purposes, I'm going to remove all of that back off the airplane. So we just click on the buttons in the tablet and those things are removed from the airplane. Okay, so... 
In terms of the tablet, you can move it around the cockpit. So if you click on the edge of the tablet, it slides it across so you can put it down here out of the way. Or if you click that side again, it flies back up here. You can make the tablet disappear by clicking on the button underneath it. And to bring it back, there's an EFB button on the bottom left of the primary instrument panel. So you click that again, it will come back. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the covers and the wheel chocks from the aircraft. I'm going to make sure on my controls that all of my controls are in the right places and I've got the parking brake on, I have. So you can see within the tablet you can do various things. So you can switch things on and off. Gives you options of guidance systems. So you could, for example, have the GNS430 or the GTN650 or the, G the PMS. Um, GTN650, so that's the TDS or the PMS, it works with both. You can show a gun sight if you want. Um, you can also show a ridiculous toy over here. Uh, I think you have to click the bottom of it and it bounces it. Which is rather ridiculous, but it's good fun. I'm just going to make sure the sound is coming through my headset, and it is. And Okay, so... We'll take the gun sight off for the moment, just to do this little test flight. You can check tyre pressures, obviously, and you can um, go around the canopy doing things. And If we go and have a look, we've got the, the fuel load out there. We've got a map. So we're at China Lake, as you can see, in a restricted area. Which is fine, because we're in a military aircraft. It does have a rudimentary autopilot built into the tablet, which is quite fun, because obviously the real aircraft didn't have one. Or it doesn't in the, the variant that is modelled. So you can come in here to do the autopilot, if you want to go and fly a long route and go and make yourself a cup of coffee or something. So you've got calibration of the levers. I have not configured the condition levers, because when you're going through the startup, you have to uh, manipulate them individually. And I've, I haven't got enough levers on my controller to do that. So I'm just going to handle them myself by hand in the cockpit. But on the, the throttle, yeah, you can get the detents for ground start and flight idle. And you can set them you know, to wherever your stick is. So you just straighten up your um, the curves in the con controller configuration. And then you can come in here and, and sort it out. Okay, so that's the tablet. We can go and get rid of that for the moment. And let's go and see about starting the aircraft up, shall we? So, as I said, I've written some instructions up and I will work through them. So, the first things we can do is press Control 3 and come down here. And we can go and turn the left and right battery systems on and close the covers on them. Then we can go over to the other side of the cockpit and we can turn the master battery switch to on. You get some lights come on around the place. You start to hear some hissing and fizzing of electrical circuits happening. Um, what else can we do? So we can go back to the other side and turn the comm and nav radios on. So you rotate the mouse on the ring underneath them to switch them to power mode. Uh, what's next? So we're going to start the engines basically. So control one and we're going to go and put the anti-collision lights to on. Now this is all a bit debatable because I think some of the ordering of things is a bit odd. You would expect normally to put some lights on to tell people that you're in the aircraft and doing things. But you've got an external lights master over here, so some of this is a bit debatable. So I've written some things in, this is very much a first draft. So, back over on this side of the cockpit, we're going to move the... Left, we'll do left engine first because that's what it says in the, the guidance that comes with the, the aircraft. I'm guessing in the real world you could do left or right first. So we make sure if these levers had started at feather and fuel shut off, we move the left one up to fuel shut off. Okay, because we're starting the left engine. We put the left starter to start. Let me watch over here and you'll see the RPM rise. When it gets to 10% we can advance the fuel condition on. Okay. So that can come up to normal flight. 
and you'll see it race round on the RPM. So it's worth having a look from outside. The animations are very nice. Okay, so once the engine is stabilised, you can turn the left generator to on. And then we basically repeat that for the right engine. So we go starter for the right engine to start. We come over and we watch the RPM. It's a noisy so-and-so, isn't it? But we'll be closing the canopy in a moment. According to the official checklist, closing the canopy is one of the last things you do. I imagine in the real world you might be shouting out of the window to the ground crew. So gone past 10%, so the fuel can go to normal. Again, I should have had it on fuel shutoff. That's fine. So once the engine is stabilised, we put the generator on for the right engine. We put the inverters. I should have done the inverters already. I've missed that on my, my own checklist. That was rather clever of me, wasn't it? So the inverters will give, obviously, power to some of the instruments. Okay, so after starting the engines, I'm going to do this out of order because it's so noisy while I'm trying to talk to you. So I'm just going to come over and click on the closed canopy. There we go. And lock the canopy down. So I'm doing some of this a little bit out of order. So then press B to calibrate the altimeter. Looks like it was already good. Press D to calibrate the uh, directional gyros. Looks like it was already good. So down on the right hand side, we've got the IFF master switch. We're going to turn to standby. That's in identification friend or foe system. And then we're ready to taxi. So before we start taxiing, let's go and do the flaps. So flap levers over here. I'm going to do this on my controls. So I'm putting them to take off. And then I'm just going to test the primary flight controls. So let's give them a stir around. And if we have a look outside the window, we can't actually see from here, but let's go and have a look. Make sure everything's working as we'd expect. So there's elevators, rudders, and ailerons. Interesting, isn't it? It's got this sort of yaw damping system. Fascinating. Anyway. Just reading down through the checklist. Okay, yeah, so we can taxi out to the runway now. So come off the parking brake, ease the throttles forwards gently. Try out the nose wheel steering, make sure it works. It's good. Should put the head tracking on and I need to centre it up. There we go. Visibility is fantastic, isn't it? So we're obviously not going to need much runway. So I'm going to do an intersection takeoff from halfway down the runway here at China Lake. Check the volume levels for you, make sure it's not completely draining you out there, I think it's fine. Right, 
let's get this lined up and go through the final things to do. Okay, so I'm just going to turn head tracking off while we do this. So down here we've got the pitot heat, which we're going to turn on. We're going to turn the formation and lights on to bright. We'll go and turn the IFF on to norm. We've done the canopy, which we did out of order, and then we can then advance the fuel condition levers to take off. And full throttle. Okay, let's just put the head tracking back on. And rotate gently. Oh, and it leaps into the air. Gear up. So once we're in the air, we can go and put the yaw damper to on. Climbs very, very well, doesn't it? Let's cut back the throttle a little bit. And let's bring these mixture levers back to normal flight. Let's have a look at it from outside. I think this is one of the best modelled aircraft I've ever seen. Let's get some speed on. I want to show you something. So we'll come around to reciprocal of the runway direction where we took off before we do this. That's the wrong way. I just wanted to show you how agile this thing is. So I'm just going to trim it out a little bit. Okay. Watch the instantaneous roll rate. Are you ready? I'll just get the nose up a little bit first. It's mad, isn't it? So I'm going to go from zero to full right deflection now. So it doesn't roll very well on its axis, obviously, because of its shape. But the instantaneous roll rate to change direction is remarkable. And because of that, if you are heavy handed with it, it's an absolute handful to fly. So just bringing the tablet back up, something else I wanted to show before we go in for an approach is you can change the dome type at the back to a glass one. And if you do that, let's just get the tablet back out of the way. I think it's control eight. Yeah, control and eight shows you out of the back. So obviously you can still fly it while you're doing this, but this allows you to do spotting out of the back of the airplane, which is quite cool. Then we've got control nine, which looks up through the, the middle of the aircraft. I believe there's controls to make these doors uh, work. So you could drop things. So if we go through the views just quickly, control one is the cockpit, control two, left side, control three, right side. Control four is showing you the cargo controls. Control five is the back seat. You can still control it while you're there. Control six, is the breakers, most of them work. 
Control 7 is that view down inside, Control 8, Control 9, and then press F to come back. Okay, should we have a go at landing it? I've not tried this at all. So we're doing 200 knots, it's pretty quick. So we're going to circle back to China Lake. So we've got the condition levers are on normal flight. We've pulled the throttles back. It does have reverse, but obviously you can't use that in flight. It will only work when you're on the ground. So let's get lined up with the runway at least. I guess while we're on our way back, let's get the nose up and do a stall test. Let's see how it behaves. We've got a fair amount of height here. So the speed's falling off, falling off, falling off. You get lots of warning. It's quite heavy though, once it starts to stall. So it really doesn't like going slow. So again, I'm running on idle and you can see the speed is just bleeding off. We're in a very slight climb at the moment. So let's put the gear down. Oh, something I, I forgot to mention earlier, there's a master switch here for the landing lights. So let's just open the throttle a little bit and put the flaps down. Let's have a look at that gear animation while we're here. It's very good, isn't it? So what do the landing lights look like? Is it just that nose light? I think it might be. Okay. Let's go for landing flaps. So landing flaps are actually, they've got like an intake there to help the airflow. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Okay, so you can see we're coming down at quite a steep angle, about 1500 feet a minute, and it's hovering at about 85 knots, 90 knots, so it's looking pretty good. Let's have a look at this from outside while we're descending. I love the, how the aerials move around in the air as well. It's very, very good, isn't it? Okay, we ought to start concentrating there. Let's get it from the centre line, keep an eye on the pappies, although it's an enormously long runway. This won't be a concern for us. So I'm feeding the power back in. I think technically I should have gone back for full um, Q 
condition on the propellers, but we'll see how we get on. Let's just hold it off the runway. That's on the edge of stalling, look. So it was about 60 knots was the safest, or the slowest safe speed you can go. So let's put the flaps back up. And taxi back in. That was good fun. So yeah, I had some procedural issues there where I didn't quite follow the checklist correctly with missing lights and things out, but this was really about just having a quick first look at it and see how we got on. I am massively impressed with it, I have to say. Let's just try those reverses out. Let's reverse. Okay, so they're not enough to go backwards. But they're very noisy. Uh, it's just going to be nosy around China Lake. Where should we go and park? In amongst the F-18s and the F-35s. Okay, so your parking brake is back on. We should just be able to pull the condition levers back. And that will kill the engines, you would hope. watch the animation just to see what happens. Very good. Okay, obviously we can reopen the canopy. And turn some things back off around the cockpit. If I can click on them. Let me turn the head tracking off. It's just wandering enough to make me miss the switches. They're quite small click spots on them. Uh, what else did we turn on? We turned on the uh, the nav and com radios, didn't we? So there's obviously lots more to play with around the cockpit. We've only really scratched the surface of it, but it's very, very cool. There's a lot modelled here, a lot to play with. So I'll go and turn the batteries back off. I think we're pretty much there. 
But yeah, as you can see, just looking around, there's tons and tons to play with. And I didn't look at anything to do with the cargo dropping possibilities or anything like that. So yeah, if we pull up the EFB, there's obviously more you can do there, certainly around putting um, things inside. So again, some of these panels that you can open up, if we open them all up and we'll go and have a look outside. So you've got the engine covers off now as well. We'll come back with the drone camera. We've got the um, the cabin at the back open. I think they used to um, ferry people around as well sometimes, you know, small, small numbers of soldiers to do airdrops. So let's go back to the drone camera and go and have a nosy around. Now we've got all the panels open just before we say goodbye for today. Yeah, it's just remarkably well done, isn't it? It's stunning, really. It's one of the best aircraft I think I've ever seen in the simulator, in terms of detail. I mean, that's just remarkable, isn't it? Very, very clever. Very cool. Okay, so I'm going to call it there. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. So that's the uh, North American Aviation AV-10 Bulldog. Uh, not Bulldog, <laughs> what am I talking about? Bronco in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's being sold by um, Azure Poly and they are selling it through the marketplace within the simulator you can download the instructions to operate it from their website. It also has the checklists uh, configured in the aircraft, although they're not very uh, verbose, but they're, they're better than nothing. You can see there's quite a few steps in each part of it. Um, but yeah, it's it's just great fun. And if, you, if you've got a few of these airports like China Lake or Nellis installed, it's going to make going and flying through the canyons great fun. Okay, so there you go. That was the AV-10 Bronco from Asia Poly and I think it's absolutely marvellous. I'm not usually into military aircraft, this is more my kind of bag though because it's just a normal aeroplane, you know, it's, although it was used by the military it was used for non-destructive purposes typically. Okay, you can carry weapons on it but it wasn't ever designed really for that. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. See you again soon. Take care.